It's almost like having a remote control built into your face. That's right. Jacob Whitehill has created a remote control that you control with your face. So this is just a simple demonstration of our smile detector, which you can, which you can see here. To turn a face into a remote control, Whitehill first worked on face expression detection. So right now, all the numbers that it's outputting are negative, meaning I'm not smiling. And then if I smile at it, and it goes up for a while. I'll hold it for a second. Then relax again. I'll smile again. And relax again. And it goes back down again. Whitehill performs his research on facial expression detection at UC San Diego's Machine Perception Laboratory. Uh, this is the, the live video feed just from a regular webcam and it finds my face as well as um, certain facial features automatically like my, uh, the corners of my mouth and my nose, um, at the corners of my eyes as well. So another action unit that I can show is called AU4 which is the brow lowerer which is the bar graph that's big right now. So right now I'm not doing the action unit. Now I'm going to do it. Frown. Hold it for a while. And I'll relax again. I should hopefully go back down. Okay. I'll do it again. AU4 goes up. Hold it. And relax again. This kind of demo application, it's almost like having a remote control built into your face, which is kind of a, um, both kind of a, a, a fun demonstration and also very useful because it keeps your hands free. Okay, so at this point he's talking at a normal speed. I'm going to make my biggest smile ever to see, to see if I can make him go really fast. So. And relax again. So it's down again. I'll do, I'll do kind of a half smile. And bigger one. Even faster. This demo is just a proof of concept of the idea of um, slowing down or speeding up the uh, rate of curriculum presentation in accordance with the student's facial expression. Yeah, speed up, come on, I understand you, get to the point, or like, you know, I'm really losing you, slow down a second, or hold on, let me think, now I got it. And uh, in a real system, we would want to train a user-specific model. Um, we would want to find out you know, what kinds of uh, signals would we want to capture in the first place. To me, it's about optimizing interactions between uh, students and teachers. And in the study, what we want to assess was, is there information in, is there, is there useful signal in the facial expression channels that can predict both how fast or slow the student wants to watch the lecture? And a second thing we wanted to see if we could predict was, uh, is facial expression information predictive of how difficult or easy the student perceives the curriculum to be each moment in time? Both um, the preferred viewing speed of the curriculum and the perceived difficulty were in fact predicted um, significantly from the facial expression information. If I'm a student dealing with a robot teacher and I'm completely puzzled and yet it's still presenting me new material, that's not going to be very useful to me. If, if, it, if instead the robot stops and says, oh, maybe you're confused, and I say, yes, thank you for stopping, that's really good. You know, in, in the current day and age of, of using Botox to improve one's facial appearance, um, uh, I would say if, if a human can reasonably discern a particular facial expression despite the Botox, then the machine has a chance of uh, also being able to recognize that expression. 